Hello, I'm Rokea el -Azhari. I am one of the dermatology consultants at Mayo Clinic. Uh, I'm a professor of dermatology and I have been here over 25 years. The two manuscripts basically uh, review all the, the survival, the treatments, and the risk factors for the, the calcifylaxis patients. So the first paper is entitled Survival, Risk Factors, and Effects of Treatment in 101 Patients with Calcifylaxis. And the second paper is entitled Calcifylaxis, a Disease of Panicular Thrombosis. In both papers, we reviewed the medical records of 101 patients who were selected as having true calcifylaxis. Uh, calcifylaxis is a disease of the adipose tissue, of the fat layer. Um, and it is a microvascular thrombosis that occurs within the fat area. This is why when you palpate the area, it is subcutaneous early on and it is necrosed and then it starts to, uh, the body tries to get rid of it and so it starts to ulcerate giving us the uh, classic look of calciphylaxis, of calciphylaxis which is ulceration with this deep uh, adherent necrotic eschar on the top of the ulcer. Given that over the years the number of calciphylaxis patients increased and it did not seem to us to be such a rare disease anymore. Um, we started taking an interest in these patients to try to help them. We looked at all the records that had the ICD-9 codes for calciphylaxis as well as records that had calciphylaxis in the narrative. There were 172 patients with that diagnosis. Of the 172 patients, we selected 101 patients that were reviewed very carefully. Known risk factors for calciphylaxis are uh, obesity and female gender, and patients on dialysis or patients with kidney disease. Other risk factors that were proposed were patients on warfarin or patients that have, uh, that have been or on corticosteroids. Uh, the, the idea of the first manuscript was to find out if there's survival is affected by any of the treatments that we gave during those past 15 years and to see if there are other risk factors uh, that can uh, be identified. Uh, so the results of the first manuscript showed that surgical debridement is helpful and improves survival. Uh, the second uh, thing that it showed is that a parathyroidectomy uh, in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease on dialysis is very helpful in improving survival. Uh, those two were both statistically significant. Other treatments uh, that we had attempted during the years is the use of sodium thiosulfate, uh, the use of tissue plasminogen activator, and the use of hyperbaric oxygen. Uh, the, although there is some benefit derived from all uh, these treatments, yet each one of them was not significantly different on a statistical basis. And finally, comparing our study, this study, to a past study that we did in the late 1990s, we showed clearly that survival in general is, has improved over the years. Uh, so that the six month survival, for example, was two months uh, in the earlier study, now the survival has improved to about four months. 
And same thing for the long-term survival. It has improved uh, over the years, potentially because of the different approaches to treatment that we have taken. So there is hope for these people. There is hope that we will be able one day to outline a very good uh, guide for the treatment of, for the approach to treatment for calciphylaxis uh, with definitive uh, treatment options for the patients. The second manuscript, which deals with the panicular thrombosis, is, uh, has identified a novel risk factor in patients that have calciphylaxis. We always knew that about 1 to 4 percent of patients with chronic kidney disease develop calciphylaxis. Why them? Why these particular subset? Uh, most patients that are on dialysis have calcifications uh, in a lot uh, of areas in their body. But why is it that only a few develop calciphylaxis? One of the hypotheses was there may be a hypercoagulable parameter that we are missing. And in one of the studies we did in 2012, we were looking at the effect of tissue plasminogen activator on patients that were treated with that medications for calciphylaxis. We noted that about 90% of those patients had a thrombophilia parameter that was positive. This led us to look closer this time, and we identified that most patients, whether they had a C a chronic kidney disease or had no kidney disease at all, most of these patients, from 60 to 70 percent of them, will have a hypercoagulable parameter identified in their uh, blood, which makes us believe that this is another risk factor for patients with calciphylaxis, and it could be one of the reasons why some people get it and some people don't. Obviously, the calcification part is very important, but some patients uh, without calcifications also get the calciphylaxis, uh, and that may be due to the fact that they have uh, a hypercoagulable parameter within their systems. So a thrombophilia workup is very important uh, before starting the patient on any anticoagulants. The other, th the other um, important finding in that um, uh, paper is that we tried to assess whether warfarin is a risk factor for calciphylaxis or not. Statistically speaking, we did not find any difference between patients on warfarin uh, versus patients that are not on warfarin or on other anticoagulants, which included either uh, Plavix or uh, aspirin. However, the, the survival of patients on warfarin was much worse than the survival of patients that were on other anticoagulants or on no anticoagulants. This is interesting because we know and we have known over the years that many patients that have and develop calciphylaxis and progress very rapidly in their calciphylaxis are already on warfarin anticoagulant. So it's clear it's not doing anything. Uh, Therefore, we are now looking and starting to look at patients that are, have taken the newer anticoagulants and see if there's a difference between them and those that have been on warfarin. So in conclusion, patients, on war, patients that have calciphylaxis and are on warfarin should be, uh, we should think that warfarin, if at all possible, should be discontinued. Uh, if there new, any newer anticoagulant is uh, not a contraindication, then I think we should go with, that, with those anticoagulants. Secondly, 
uh, the uh, thrombophilia workup is an important part of uh, the workup for calcifylaxis and we need to know if this is related to calcification plus thrombosis or just thrombosis alone and we clearly realize that a, an anticoagulant is an important uh, treatment option for these patients. We used to use in the past tissue plasminogen activator uh, that has been that requires hospitalization and requires um, a lot of monitoring and we now think that we should probably just use the uh, novel anticoagulants like the uh, thrombin inhibitors or the factor 10 inhibitors our work here is not finished it is just the beginning uh, we will put be putting together guidelines and uh, treatment options uh, for patients with calcifylaxis and we hope that the survival is going to improve over the years as we know more and more about this disease. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.